Good afternoon. This is Robert Serfolio coming to you live from Cabo, Mexico. Um, honored to have your time today. And we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of reviewing videos, which you're all welcome to do, we have over 80 videos on my YouTube channel. So please feel free to go to YouTube, put in Serfolio Surgery. And we have many videos of which talk about how to handle bleeding. But I think many of us sit in conferences all day. We get tired of seeing PowerPoint presentations all day. And I've been very honored and lucky to have the opportunity to mentor and coach a lot of surgeons. And really most of it is done like this. So I thought we would take this time where we could act as a coach to all of you individually. And the topic that I've been honored to give today, and I'm honored to have your attention, is how do you handle intraoperative bleeding? when you're in a minimally invasive environment. And my experience is robotic, but of course it could be with video-assisted thoroscopy. Well, the answer is it depends on the risk of the patient, the degree of the injury, your experience, what is the chance or likelihood you're going to open later. You know, in our experience, we do everything robotically and don't ever really need to open. So even a major injury to the main pulmonary artery can be handled minimally invasively. And many of you may be in your first 100 or 200 robotic operations. We're in our 3,000th. So at 3,000, we feel comfortable doing that. So I think I'm going to have to make my points and the caveats that it depends on your own experience. But let's just talk in general what your initial reaction should be. Your initial reaction is you are going to be afraid. I don't care what your level of experience is. It's going to be one of fear and it's going to be one, can I take the patient's life? And so for that reason, most people immediately pack and open. Your initial thing is to pack, pack, pack. I don't have Raytex in the field when I'm operating, but if you do, you should put it on the field or you can even grab the artery. We don't like this technique. Many people can make it worse if it's a big cut or a big injury, as you'll see in a few of my videos. But in most, you can take the lung and grab it and pack it or take a Raytec and pack. So that is the first thing. The first thing that you as an athlete need to be is poised and remain poised. You can't yell at your team. And if you have treated your team poorly all during the year, this is when they're gonna get you back because they're not gonna perform for you. But if you've been kind and you've been humble and you've been a faithful, humble servant to your team and your patient, as most of us are becoming now as surgeons, humble leaders, which is beautiful, and servant leaders, they're going to perform. So your bedside assistant should immediately bring in several packs. You should then pack and hold pressure. You must make sure there is no active bleeding. So poise is one, poise to your team and to yourself, not yelling. Two is pressure. So these are the two Ps. Three is to call your partner. So when I got to NYU in New York City, we didn't really have a protocol. We have some fantastic surgeons like Dr. Zervos there, who doesn't need to call for help, but most of us call help. And so we now have a process that all of us, if we get into bleeding, we hold pressure and we call our partner. So it's poise, pressure, call your partner. And in our hospital, we don't type and cross or type and screen. So now we have to tell the anesthesiologist, hey, listen, we have a major hole in a major pulmonary artery. We're probably not going to transfuse, but let's get type and screen or even a type and cross in the operating room. We have one or two IVs. That's usually all you need. You don't need to panic. Uh, and early in my career, I packed a lot of injuries and opened and found that they were very minor if they're out in low bar or sub low bar branches. But if the patient has pulmonary hypertension or they're central, then you'll need to do that. Then I think you wait 10 or 15 minutes. Usually at that point, you can take the pack away and the bleeding is gone. If the bleeding is severe, you can put an adjunct on it like Arista or Surgicel or some other pack and hold it and then take your packs off and it should be fine. And at that point, you usually can get proximal and distal control of the vessels and go from there. Now, in our videos, we show many specific ways to get proximal control. But when I coach surgeons, we do it without video. So let's just talk about it. 
On the left side, if you need to open the pericardium, yes, you increase the risk of atrial fibrillation, but it's still minor. I would do that. Make sure you're getting around the left pulmonary artery and not the main. Make sure you see the aortic arch. And then take the long blunt instrument and put it in your dominant hand, your right hand, usually in your left. You'll have to switch it and get around the main PA, double loop it and bulldog clamp it as we show in our videos. On the left side, it's a little bit more difficult. If you're not going to ligate any of the vasculature, such as this right superior pulmonary or right inferior pulmonary vein, you need to kind of get around the superior pulmonary vein and pull it out of the way or come over the top of the lung see the right main stem bronchus and the main PA, and then push away the uh, superior vena cava, be able to get around the main pulmonary artery there and encircle it. Again, we like to get around it twice with a large band, wide, wide double loop, and then put a Satinsky on it. And then very importantly, and I continue to say this at every meeting and the message is not getting out there, you do not need to clamp the distal PA. The distal PA control is almost always the vein. So if you're doing a left upper lobectomy and you put a hole in the PA, take the left upper lobe vein, get around the left lower lobe vein, clamp it, the left lower lobe vein, that's your distal PA clamp, and then a clamp on your main PA, and now you have lots of room to work and to sew the pulmonary artery up. In general, I'm here to support you and tell you poise, P number one, Pressure, P number two. Your partner, P number three. Packed red blood cells, P number four. Prayers, which I believe in, P number five, the five Ps. And there's other Ps that people know about, such as proline as well. But with this advice, relax. You're excellent surgeons. Don't become a victim yourself. Sometimes we as doctors feel the pressure and then we become victimized when we've given a patient a bad outcome. Take your time, hold pressure. You have all day, as long as you can pack it and it's not bleeding, you can hold that for 15, 20, 30 minutes. Get help in the room, get a plan, take your time, let your heart rate relax, because it's never the first injury that hurts the patient, it's the second. It is with this, I uh, hope to see you all in person. I'm sorry I can't be there in person, I'm here uh, at a conference in Mexico. Uh, I'm going to be playing some golf later today and swimming in the ocean. And I wish you all happiness and joy and wellness. Thank you and God bless you, Robert Serfolio.